So now we come to our final concept within geometric sequences, and that is infinite geometric series. We have an example to start off with, uh, where we have 2, 6, 18, 54, okay, first term of 2, con ratio 3. Okay, and what if we wanted to find the sum of the first seven terms, for example? Okay, it should be simple enough. Um, we have a formula for this. Okay, we can plug in 2, 3, and 7, and get 2,186. Easy enough. Okay, now what if we had a bit of a, a strange question, uh, and I asked you to find the sum of the first, uh, or the sum of infinitely many terms? Um, well, what does that really even mean? Um, I had to add together all the terms um, just to infinity. Uh, keep adding and adding forever. Okay, I'd add 162 after these four. Okay, then I'd quickly get into the thousands and the millions uh, and just keep increasing forever, right? Um, and yes, it would just keep increasing forever, and we can basically say that this sum um, tends to infinity, uh, equals infinity. So that's not really a very useful question. All it really says is that this sequence is an increasing sequence. Um, well, so why are we doing this? Why are we talking about this today? Uh, well, let's have a look at our second example here. This is also a geometric sequence. Uh, we have a first term of two. A uh, common ratio of a half, and um, well, can we find the sum of infinitely many terms in this uh, series? Uh, well, I think we can. Um, I don't know if we could try even try to do something manually. Uh, okay, it get very complicated with decimals and how many terms do we have to add? I mean, obviously, it's impossible to add infinitely many terms manually. Uh, but maybe a, a diagram will help us here. Okay, I'm going to uh, represent each term of the sequence with rectangles, okay, areas of rectangles. Okay, so the first uh, rectangle has area 2, then 1, okay, and this is all enclosed by this 2 by 2 square. Okay, and okay, so we're going to keep going with these rectangles, okay, a half, a quarter, one eighth. 16th and so on okay and we'll see that there's always space for the next one okay it always takes up half of the remaining space even okay so this would never stop this would keep going forever um, and this is what we want we want to add up all these areas and we want to add up infinitely many of them okay um, well we can't really say what it just equals because um, because we keep adding and adding. Uh, but we can give it a limit. That's what we're writing down here. The limit of the sum of n terms as n tends to infinity. That's what all this notation is telling us. So is there a limit? Uh, well, yes. Okay, These rectangles will never go beyond the uh, boundary of this purple square. Okay, and that's a 2 by 2 square. Um, so this limit is 4. Okay, so how, how can we do this uh, when we have more awkward numbers and without drawing a diagram every time? Okay, how can we find this limit of infinitely many terms? Well, here we have the, the regular uh, sum of the first n terms formula. Okay, if we try and fill that in quickly uh, for the previous example, um, even though sort of 0 0.5 to the power of infinity isn't really valid, mathematically, uh, this is what we'd initially get. So what, what, is, what does that mean, 0 0.5 to the power of infinity? Uh, well, we're really doing a limit as n tends to infinity. Um, so what is the limit of 0 0.5 to the power of n uh, as n tends to infinity? Um, that's what we're writing here. Well, it just keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, as you can see, and we can say that it just keeps getting closer and closer to zero. So the limit equals zero. Okay, and as that's what we're really talking about here, when I say S of infinity, um, we're talking about limits. Well, I can actually just replace 0 0.5 to the power of infinity uh, with zero. Okay, so 
Oops, if I give a zero there instead, one, uh, one minus a half is a half. Do some cancellation, some calculation, and we get our four that we were trying to find previously. Okay, so a sum to infinity does seem to be possible. Um, well, before we had, in our first example, we had a corner ratio of three, and that didn't work because three to the power of infinity, or the limit, it just was infinity. Okay, but a half worked because it kept getting smaller and smaller every time. Okay, so when does this work? Um, which R values? Well, whenever it's less than one. Okay, because anything less than one multiplied by itself gets smaller. Anything more than one gets bigger. And now I've just added an absolute value as well, uh, because the same is true uh, for negatives as well. Okay. Um, if I was multiplying by negative 0.2 every time, the absolute value of each term would get smaller and smaller. Okay, so uh, if we have an R that's between minus 1 and 1, uh, we can calculate the sum to in of infinity uh, infinitely many times. Okay, but we can generalize this sort of calculation, this process that we went through. Okay, and we can say that because R to the power of n will always tend towards zero, so this bracket would equal one every time if r was uh, less than one. Uh, well, this fraction would um, always just be one uh, u1 over one minus r, okay, as long as the absolute value of the corner ratio is less than one. Okay, this is a formula for the sum of infinitely many terms. So uh, a very simple example here, if we had a uh, first term of 400 uh, and the common ratio of 0 0.6, can we find the sum of infinite terms? Well, we plug it in. Uh, 400 divided by 0 0.4 is 1000. Okay, uh, quite a simple formula to use for such a tricky concept. Um, can we check this? Well, the sum of the first five terms would be 922.2 something. Some of the first 10 terms we already get up to 993, uh, some of the first 20 terms, 999.96, and we're already getting very, very close to 1,000. Okay, it will never reach 1,000, really, but the limit of this sum is 1,000. Okay, so uh, most SL students won't really need to worry about uh, this whole limit terminology too much. Okay, and it's much safe okay as long as you get the general idea just to say that s of infinity equals 1000 okay um, sum of infinitely many terms equals 1000 uh, is probably satisfactory for standard level okay and one more example there um, a bit of a reverse one where you're given the first term and um, you've got this uh, sigma notation which is another way of just saying <laughs> S of infinity, sum of infinitely many terms again. Um, and can we find the common ratio this time? Well, uh, this is what we can plug in. And now we're solving for R, so just uh, a bit of rearranging to do. Okay, so we divide by 4.5, we get two thirds. And a couple more steps, we'll get one third. Um, so that's our answer. Common ratio should be one third for those things that, uh, those two bits of information at the top to be true. So can we check this? Okay, well this would be the sequence if it was uh, r of one third. So what would these sums be? Uh, three, four, four 3, 4.3 recurring, and 4.4 recurring, and we can see that we immediately have got very close to 4.5, and we'll continue to get closer and closer uh, forever. Okay, so this seems like a valid result. Okay.